Hey guys, this is the second video in which we'll be doing hands-on for cellular automata uh, for spatial modeling. So, without wasting too much of time, let's get into it. You can go to the link that I have given in the description, which is a Mendeley data link, where you can find all the raw raster data sets that I used in the previous study. Uh, for the, in order to get the details of how the flow of everything is, you can refer to this published article uh, in which we have mentioned in detail what we did in the study. So here is the raw raster data sets that you can find. You, you can download all the files at once, which will be a zip file. So this is the zip file that you download. When you extract it, you will get all these rasters. So these are the sim simulated ones. You can delete this for now to avoid confusion. And this also. So you have a Python script and all the rasters. So in order to proceed, let's first understand what all different rasters are. So I've added all of them in a QGIS. So this is a land cover data of 1999 of the study area. And this is the land cover for 2004. So when we toggle, we can see the difference in the built up region. So these are the two, uh, data, uh, two raster layers that we'll be using in the present modeling. So this is the third raster, which is the distance to major roads. So the values are, you can check the values at every cell. So this I generated using multiple ring buffer. This is a population density map that we generated at uh, using the polygons and census data. You can inquire about them as well. The darker color shows the areas with maximum population density. So this is uh, another layer that we used to show the restricted and non-restricted area just in order to replicate the actual real world growth process. So in this the red region, it's the value is one. So the growth won't take place because these are all restricted areas. And this is a non-restricted areas in which growth is organic. So this can be used. So this is again uh, the distance to central business district. You can identify and check the values here. Similarly, you have slope also, whose values are 1, 2, and 75. I classified it to reduce the data size. Um, I, this has been prepared using Cartoset 1 DEM. You can use SRTM or any DEM data of your choice. Another thing to notice is that for any modeling, you have to match the geometries of all the rasters that you are going to use. So when you go and check in the information, the pixel size is 30 by 30, and the dimension is 1822 by 1935. So for all of them, the dimension and the pixel size should be the same. In the downloaded data, you will find all of it the same. But if you have to do it, do the growth modeling using your own data, I recommend you to match the pixels or else it will be difficult for the model to see, to relate the pixels basically. So now that you have downloaded all the files, we have to edit this Python script for which I'll be using Python 3.6. Uh, in the previous versions, uh, in the previous videos, I've suggested Python 3.4 some version. I don't exactly remember, but uh, I think now that 3.7 has been released. Uh, so 3.6.8, I found the most stable one, and it's also faster. So I personally prefer 3.6.8 these days. So this is the model. Let's realign the windows. But uh, before proceeding, make sure that you have all the libraries. Uh, mostly, they are most all the libraries are uh, inbuilt libraries. The only GDAL library you have to take care of. Uh, please uh, install GDAL before proceeding. You can check out the other video to see how to install GDAL. Now the script says the below part of the code should be updated. So what we have to do is to change the directory here. So this is the directory where all my files are located. I'll update it here to backslash. So I'll be running the model for actual 1999 and 2004. Okay, and then you have the parameters defined, the distance to CBD layer, the distance to road, the restricted raster, population densities of year 1991, 2001, 11, 19, and 24. 19 and 24 were projected from the UN World Population Projections and the slope, obviously. So here, uh, you pretty much don't have to manipulate this. So this is your uh, land cover class. 
so in which you have to input the land cover of the first year time t1 and the time 2 land cover image and then you have to assign the factors which you have read here in the model so in order so you need to mention the all the parameters in order except for this restricted parameter so this is the distance to cpt distance to road population slope and restricted so what you do is you have to fit the model using the land cover that you have read and all the parameters okay then in the next model we set the thresholds for all the parameters that we have mentioned already please make sure that the order of parameters and the order of thresholds that we enter should be the same and uh, yeah and then that that's how so uh, so if you read it here uh, assign negative values if less than rule is required I mean let's say for example if for a parameter you want uh, the growth to take place if the values are more than something so in that case you can keep it positive and for some parameters you want the values less than something in that case you can keep it negative so one other thing that uh, is worth mentioning is that the very first parameter is the size of the kernel so in this case we are using a kernel of size 3 by 3 followed by the threshold so this 15,000 is the CPT threshold and the parameters defined here are in terms of priority if while running a model if the model finds a value of a pixel uh, is greater than the threshold defined here and here I mean the very first criteria it fulfills to do do to make the transition to urban pixel it will uh, change the pixel state to urban from non urban okay so you set the thresholds for model you uh, predict the model on the same image and then you check the accuracy let's run it and see what comes out it says all the okay so we have our prediction predicted results here which shows actual growth was 70 and predicted growth was 104 these are in square kilometers and the spatial accuracy was almost 71 percent that means the 71 percent pixels matched exactly so uh, you can keep changing the threshold to see what what is the best value that fits for you uh, another small change is that this three is not the kernel size this is the threshold for built up the number of built up cells in the neighboring uh, pixels in the kernel uh, which are the minimum i mean the minimum number of built up cells required and any of these to change the state from non-built up to built up if you want to change the kernel size you can scroll up and in line 130 you can see kernel size which is currently three you can change it so now we have let's say for example you are done with tweaking the parameters and achieving the best results possible so what you can do is uncomment this line and uh, go to this line line number 150 and change the lc1 to lc2 so what we were doing earlier is to use land cover 1 to predict it which was predicting closer to the land cover 2 tweaking the parameters and then training the model and now when we are pretty much sure with the thresholds we use the second land cover map to predict it so that's what we are doing so let's run this model again this is the file that you'll be getting you can change the date to now if you want predicted land cover save it hit run okay so model prediction is complete now um, because it uh, used the same same two rasters for accuracy assessment maybe you should just comment this line before exporting because this does not make any sense now uh, okay so now let's check this is our predicted raster predicted urban raster using the 2004 data let's add it in the QGIS okay let's add it above actual 2004 and we'll actually see what's happening we can copy this type we can paste it and then see so when we zoom in and then as you can see this is 2004 and then you have predicted so while the raster looks dense but it has not spread too much because the kernel size was 3 by 3 only so if you zoom in and see it only made changes in the the immediate neighboring pixels so you may want to play around with the kernel size and thresholds and other parameters 
parameters more than what is given in this data. So keep trying. Thanks for watching the video and uh, keep sharing, keep contributing to the open source software community.